Hey folks, welcome to a little combo classroom bonus video where I'd like to tell you about something interesting I recently realized about the type of number called primorials, which is sort of a relative of the type called factorials. And in general, in this bonus video, we're going to be looking at how these types of numbers, really large ones of them, for example, would end in a particular base. What would be the final digits we would see in our base 10 system or in another way of writing numbers? And to begin, factorials are defined by multiplying all of the whole numbers up through some point, like four factorial is one times two times three times four, which is 24. And primorials are quite similar, but we just multiply the prime numbers up through some point, just including the numbers that's only factors are one and themselves. And if we go up to, for example, five primorial, that would be two times three times five, all the primes up to there, which is 30 in that case. Typically, if you saw something like four primorial, you would assume it's going to be equal to three primorial or a primorial of a composite would end up being the same result as the primorial of the latest prime beneath it. And if we look at these two types of numbers, while they have many similarities, they also have an interesting difference that occurred to me the other day. With factorials, if we look at the end of larger and larger factorials, they will begin to accumulate zeros. They'll have more and more zeros stacked at the end, not just in a base 10 system, but in another typical base, what I'll call a basic base, meaning a positional numeral system that works like base 10, but with a different number, two or larger, to work as our base number. And when we look at what causes a number to end in a zero in a base, that means that it contained prime factors of if the base was a prime of that specific prime, or if the base was composite, that it contained prime factors that added up to the whole prime factorization of the composite base. Meaning, for example, in base 12, 12 has a prime factorization of two squared times three, and so numbers that are multiples of two squared times three would end in a zero in that base. And if a number was a multiple of that twofold, meaning that it was a multiple of two to the fourth power times three squared, then it would be even further having two zeros at the end of it. And with factorials, as we count up numbers, we're going to hit more and more multiples of any particular base number and the factors that could make it up. And as we hit these multiples and pass more and more with the factorials written in any basic base, a large enough factorial will end in tons of zeros. That's something that many of you may have already realized about factorials, but I'd never thought about how a similar question would apply to primorials. Now, at first, when I wasn't thinking about it very much, in the back of my head, I kind of thought a really large primorial would probably end in a bunch of zeros like a really large factorial. But then when I thought about it for a moment, I realized, well, would it end in ever more than one zero? Because to get our first zero in base 10, for example, we need to have a two and a five in our prime factorization. And as we go up primorials, we're only multiplying different primes, and none of those primes by definition could be another multiple of two or of five. So we're never going to contribute another factor of two or five 
into the prime factorization of any further primorial. In fact, the prime factorization of any further primorial would have every prime just to the first power up through whatever point that primorial was. For example, this prime factorized would be all of the primes up through 19 each to the first power, and none of them would get a second power on one of these primes, so they would never be able to have another zero. Not just in the base 10 system, but in any basic base to get two zeros at the end of a primorial. We would have had to have whatever composed the base, either a prime itself or some primes that made up the base number, each to twice as high of a power as we possibly could have by constructing them one prime at a time. And so I realized with primorials in basic bases, we're going to start with no zeros at the end. We're going to get sometimes a single zero. And you could imagine that in base 12, we imagined earlier, which is composed of two squared times three, we wouldn't even ever get a first zero because we're never going to get that second power on the two that we would have to be a multiple of. And so in a basic base, we're going to get to a point where we get either no zeros or one zero and never anymore. No primorials can end in two or more zeros. And what about right before that? What about the second last digit? Well, that was the next interesting thing I realized about these. Well, if we're looking at multiplying a new prime to each of these last ones to make the next, because I could see this as the primes up through 11 multiplied together, or as seven primorial times 11 now in the mix. Now, when I turn one of these into the next by multiplying it by a new prime, the prime I multiply it in, in base 10, is going to end in a 1, 3, 7, or 9. Because in base 10, all primes past these really early ones must end in a 1, 3, 7, or 9. And if I look at multiplying any of these ones, once we've accumulated a 0, and starting with the first place that occurred, the 30 here, and I imagine multiplying that by a prime number that must end in 1, 3, 7, or 9, and this ended in a 0, we could note that the only thing that could affect what that becomes, the second to last digit, is what's already there modularly multiplied by the last digit of the new prime. And if we look at the modular patterns of starting from three and then always multiplying by something ending in a one, three, seven, or nine, we see that the second to last digit will always be a one, three, seven, or nine. Similarly to primes themselves, near the end of a primorial, we must have a one, three, seven, or nine, except for the cases of the very first few, except now it's the digit next to the zero, the second last digit that will have that trait. Unfortunately, if I tried to take this further and either look at the third last digits of these or look at what pattern there might be to when it's a one, three, seven, or nine in the second last digit, it would be a lot trickier and would contain a lot of currently unsolved questions because prime numbers still have many mysteries to their distribution. And when the prime numbers that end in a given digit in our base occur exactly is still pretty mysterious, meaning that this second to last digit of primorials at a certain point will contain many unsolved mysteries as well. Now, if we looked at other bases, 
like I said, they're either going to get to a point where primordials end in a single zero or no zeros at all, and the final non-zero digit in the other possible bases we could count in will also have its own patterns of what possibilities it could be. Leave a comment if you want to take some time and figure out, for example, in base 6 or base 12 or another base, what would the options be there? And in general, I just wanted to share these little fun facts for now. Make sure you're also tuned into my main combo class channel, where I recently put out an episode about fractals. And pretty soon I have another cool episode coming out. And I'll catch you for some more bonus stuff on this channel soon as well. Also, special thanks to people who help make these videos possible, such as my Patreon supporters. And to all of you, hope you have a great day. Hope you learned something or another. And I'll catch you again in the next one.